What up folks, it's Alex here. I hope you're well and I hope you've been enjoying the new transitions pack. Now this isn't a tutorial. Please don't try and follow along because I do skip over things and I talk about things a little bit quicker than usual, but I just wanted to sort of empty out my brain, show you the thought process, show you how I came about making these transitions because they're not made in the normal way. They all use expressions, there's no keyframes, so they're a little bit different and I figured some of you may be interested in seeing how they work. Now, I say some of you, because I do mean some of you, a lot of you won't care about this, this video won't be for you, because it won't be a real simple, this is what we're making and this is how you do it. It's a bit longer and I haven't really cut it down into a nice condensed format like I usually do. Now, before we get into it, I just wanna let you know I'm not a fusion or an expressions expert, really, so there may be better ways of doing these things, if you are a Fusion expert yourself, please feel free to let me know down in the comments below if I can be doing things any better. Now, also, in a moment, I'm gonna show you these different expressions. I'm gonna talk about the easing in and out. I haven't actually made my expressions available to you just yet. I will do, I just need to finish them all first. I've done a fair chunk of them, I need to finish the rest, and then they'll be going up on my website probably, and you can just hop on, grab them for yourself, and use them to do whatever you want to do. Now that probably doesn't make sense without watching the video, but once you've watched the video, what I'm saying will make more sense. Anyway, with all that out of the way, make sure you've got a drink or something to keep you occupied. Let's open Resolve and have a look, shall we? So here we are in DaVinci Resolve, we're on the Edit tab as usual. So we're just gonna open up my effects library, video transitions, come down to the Fusion transitions, and I'm gonna grab this Cross Dissolve. It's just a standard one which exists within 16.2. We're gonna shove that on there like so, and if we hit play, it's a real simple, just dissolve transition between the two clips. We can lengthen it, we can shorten it, and it will just do the exact same thing, like so. So actually have a look under the hood, right click, open in Fusion page. And it looks something like this. It's very similar to any other thing that you've worked on in Fusion. You've got a media in, you've got your nodes in the middle, and then you've got a media out, but you've also got a media in two. Media in one is your first clip, so that's of the hotel from the ground up. Media in two, that's my, that's this one you're seeing here. This is the hotel or office building from higher up. And then we've got a cross dissolve. That's a group at the minute. So I'm just gonna right click, ungroup that. And you can see this is really simple. You've got two bits of media coming into a dissolve and it should dissolve in between the two. But what's interesting is how this works. So it's not actually keyframed. It's using a little tool they've added called the resolve parameter. So if I just right click on this, you can see it's there because I've got ability to remove it. So I'm just gonna remove that. And now, as you can see, it's doing nothing. It's stuck at where it left it, which is 0 0.6. So I'm gonna right click, modify with resolve parameter. And all the resolve parameter does is it means at the very beginning, that's at zero. And at the very end, it's gonna be one. Very similar to the expression, which I talked about in a previous video recently. So that's cool, it's really handy. And you can basically do that on any of the attributes in any of the nodes within Fusion. So I found this and started having a play. So I thought, oh, what else can you do with it? So let me just grab a transform and I'll put it down here. So all of these things generally, you can right click, modify with the resolve parameter. And anything that goes from zero to one, that's perfect. But it starts to become a little bit different when you want to do more than just zero to one. So let me use angle, for example. If we modify that with resolve parameter, it just does zero to one, but one degrees isn't really that useful because you can barely see it's not much of a transition. Now, you can amend that. You can play with the parameters of the resolve parameter by clicking on modifiers, and you've got the scale, and you've got the offset. So you can add delays, and you can increase the scale. So if I just increase this by, let's do 90, now you can see in the angle it goes from 0 to 90. We've just multiplied it by 90. I get it. It's, it's handy. It's a nice, easy way to work, modify with, and then change the modifiers but I wanted to know if there's an expression to do it just that little bit easier. I could save them all in a notepad and just dump them in. It just does the same thing, but it's the way I like to work. Time divided by comp dot render end, which is identical. It's doing the exact same thing. It's just a zero, two, a one, but I just found it to be a little bit easier. So I can put that in brackets because we want that in brackets. I keep getting told off they're not brackets, are they? Whatever they're actually called. I apologize to you coders that know what they're actually called, I call them brackets. I think brackets make sense to most, so I'm gonna keep calling that. But I apologize to you guys who I'm really, really annoying by calling them brackets. We're gonna multiply that by 360. And now we've got 
a consistent 360 degree spin which always starts at the very start of the transition and ends at the very end of the transition. And I can just copy that, save it in a notepad. I've got a cheat sheet of all these different expressions. I can dump them in and job done. Now that may not be the way everyone likes to work, but it just sort of works for me. If I hit play, job done, it's nice and handy. So if we go back to edit now, I'll hit play. There we go. We've got this simple spin, 360 degree transition. But the problem with it is it just looks bland. It just looks a bit rubbish. And the main reason it looks rubbish is because there's no easing or speed ramping or whatever you want to call it. There's no acceleration. There's no momentum. So that's when I really started to go down this rabbit hole. I wondered if there's a mathematical equation to do what we've done, a naught to one timer, but with a curve. So with easing, with acceleration or with momentum. So I started digging around and the simpler answer is yes. It's called the Penner easing functions. So this is what they look like. There's a whole bunch of them. We've got cine, quad, cubic, quart, quint, expo, circ, back, elastic, and bounce. Now, if you see this little faded line here, that's linear. That's just going from zero to one at a linear speed. And all the balls are representing the different types of acceleration curve that you can use. So then I started looking at the math and the math is really quite complicated. You have to input four values the time, the duration from naught to one. B is the start point, which is usually zero. C is the change, and then D is the total duration. So it started to seem a bit complicated and I've lost my way with it a little bit. And then I stumbled across this guy's article, Josh on design, improved easing functions. And he takes the Penner's functions that he's written and just makes it a little bit simpler and easier to understand. So I definitely recommend reading this article if you're interested. And then I found this website easings.net and it's got all of those penners easings on display here we've got ins outs and in and outs now if i click on cubic cubic's the easiest one to start with i'm going to do a simple ease in cubic scroll down to the bottom you've got the maths function here but this takes all the durations and stuff out of it and just says if you've got a variable which is zero to one so if you've got a zero to one time then this is the math you need to create this acceleration curve, which is perfect, exactly what I want. And this cubic one's dead easy to do a acceleration in and ease in. It's x, which is our zero to one, x multiplied by x multiplied by x, or x to the power of three. So let's just put that into resolve. Now I'm gonna put it on here because it's just a little bit easier to visualize initially. So this is just a linear, this is a time, over comp dot render end. So this starts at zero, ends at one, and moves at a linear pace. So in the middle, it's exactly 0.5, a quarter of the way in, it's 2.5, 7.5, etc. It's moving at a consistent linear speed. So if we just come into this second one here, and I'm going to do what was advised, which is time divided by comp dot render end. We're going to multiply that by the same thing. Oh, ignore that. And we're going to multiply that by the same thing again, and hit enter. And now it starts at zero, it ends at one. But if you have a look, a quarter of the way in, it's at 0 0.009, it's not even hit 0 0.1 yet. Halfway in, it's just hitting 0 0.1. Three quarters of the way in, it's only at 0 0.4, but then it accelerates really quick at the end to get to our one. So we have this acceleration curve. Now, writing it like that is a bit of a pain, so what you can actually just do is time, divided by comp dot render end to the power of three. And it's doing the exact same thing like so. So let's just copy that. We're gonna head back into our fusion transition and we wanna multiply it by 360 because we're doing this 360 degree spin. So let's just paste that in there. We'll wrap that up as well. Like so. So now if we hit play, it starts off slow and then speeds up. So we've got this acceleration to it which starts to look a little bit better. Now this is just an easy and it's not an in and out. So actually it looks janky at the end because it's still gaining speed by the time it stops. So let's head back to the easing and we'll grab the ease in and out cubic, which looks something like this. Now I'm not gonna explain all the maths in this because I've got them written down in here. We've got cubic ease in and out. I'm just gonna copy that and we'll use that one instead. So just within here, paste that, 
and here we go. So now, as you can see, it starts off slow, accelerates in the middle, and then slows down again. So we've got a real nice, consistent easing in and out animation transition, which is completely scalable. Doesn't matter how long or short you make the transition, it's always going to essentially do the same thing. Now, there's lots of different ones. As I say, there's all these different ones which you can just convert into expressions. So let's just take another one. One of my favorites, it's really long. So again, I'm not going to explain the maths. I couldn't explain the maths. I've just taken pre-existing maths and turned it into an expression. So don't ask me to explain why this is this and this is this, because I don't know if I'm entirely honest with you. We'll copy this one, go to a transform. Let's just start again, because that's confusing. We want that multiplied by 360. Done. So if we hit play, it goes that way flips right around and comes in like so. So as you can see, we've got this animation. It's got weight to it. It looks really good. It flips one way, zips around the other, carries that momentum and then settles at the end. And again, all I've done is copied the pre-existing expression and dumped it into the expression on here, multiplied by 360. This just becomes really simple, really easy. You can have a cheat sheet with all these different expressions on. You just choose sort of the look, the easing that you want paste it into an expression, multiply it by the value, whatever you need it, and job done. Then pretty much anyone can make these transitions themselves. Now, the thing that you lose is that real creative side. So the best people, the people that are really good at making these transitions, they'll time it all perfectly using the curves and they'll accelerate and decelerate in the perfect spots and they make really nice professional looking transitions. So you lose that creativity side, but what you get is a real nice, consistent, really quick, really easy to make way of creating these transitions. Let me give you another example. Let's get rid of this one. Let's use one of my whips, which I've made. Would you use your whip left? We'll open this up and I'll show you how easy this was to create. So we've got our media two, media one, we've got a transform node, we've got a merge and we've got directional blur. Now every single one of these is made using expressions. There's no keyframes at all. So the blur, this is a one that I created. All it does is it goes up in a curve to one, hangs on one for a moment or two, and then whips back down to zero. Easy, two seconds to do, because I can just, I've got the expression saved, I can just dump it in there. So this is the first clip, and we want this to start up 0 0.5 and move over to minus 0.5 like that. I want it to move one out of the way. So let's grab my expressions. Let's just use this one because I've got it saved and copied. This is an out and in. We're going to right click on center. We're going to do an expression. Now, because there's two points to this one, it looks like this. We're going to leave the Y as it is because we're not doing any up and down. All we do is 0 0.5 minus, pop in our expression there because we're doing a minus one. Hit enter. And now that starts there. It'll flick over to the right and then flick over to the left like so. Now the next one, that's just sat in the middle. It's not doing anything at the minute. We just need to do the same thing. So an expression. This one we want to start at 1.5 because we want it to start over on the right hand side here and then move over at the same speed. So we can do minus, paste our expression, hit enter, and now we've got this. So whips over to the right, whips to the left, done. Hit play, easy peasy. And because it's mathematic, it's consistent, it won't change, it won't ever in theory go wrong. Looks good because we've got this acceleration curve to it and there you go congratulations round of applause to you if you made it this far that really does take some perseverance to listen to me waffle for that amount of time so thank you well done to you hopefully you did enjoy the video though if you did thumbs up if you didn't thumbs down obviously pop any comments or feedback down below if you like this format if you like what i showed you if you're interested in it please do let me know if you're new around here don't forget to hit subscribe thank you very much for watching until next time Take it easy. I'll see you soon. Bye. Nah.